Hi everyone and welcome back to Grace by Faith. We are continuing our Marvelous May series where we are doing a deep dive into motherhood, ministry, and marriage. This week we are going to continue our conversation um, surrounding ministry and I'm really trying to uh, be concise this week so there's just a few things I want to touch on. So I want to talk about ministry, what it is, what it's not, where are some examples in the Bible, and then my own personal ministry journey. So ministry, when you see the word ministry in the Bible, you oftentimes see it in the New Testament, which was written in Greek. And in the Greek language, in the Bible, it centers around service to others. And so one of the things that's most important when you think about like, what's my ministry? What is God um, calling me to do as probably something to be of service to someone else? So it's not to make you wealthy. I can attest to that. It is not to make you famous. I can attest to that. It is definitely being called and used by God to be of service to other people, to bring them unto salvation, to help them experience God's peace and his love. And so um, it centers around Christ and then others. And you're just the instrument. You're the tool that's used for God's glory. So the second thing is, where can we find it in the Bible? Um, one of the things that I'm really interested in is looking at people's story um, in the Bible of like where they started from, what they went through, how God used that, and... Um, like what was revealed through their life. And so in 1 Samuel 16, we see David. We see the, the prophet Samuel going to anoint the next king of Israel. And he goes to Jesse's house. And he's like, I want to look over your sons. God told me the next king of Israel is here. So uh, none of them that were first presented uh, were to be anointed king. And so they didn't even bother to call David from the shepherd's field. And so everyone else had been looked over. And so you see um, this rejection, this overlooking. Um, and so that's sometimes often with our own ministry and our own lives, things that we are overlooked for. Because like, if God wanted to use the best and the brightest, um, then mo most likely our human nature, our inclination would be to take that credit. So God likes to do miracles through um uh, ordinary people and so David was overlooked and then you see another point in his journey in his ministry journey like he was going to be of service to people first he was of service to sheep then when he was of service to Saul and you see his recommendation came because he was a shepherd's boy it's like oh like um there's a shepherd's boy who plays a lyre who can help you with this spirit you're going through this spirit that's tormenting you and so um, his recommendation came not for what he was known and had done very well with his father's flock, shepherding, but because he could play a musical instrument. So sometimes our gifts make room for us to operate in our ministry. So you may be thinking like, well, I know God is calling me to leadership. Like, why am I only contributing X at this place or at this church? Or Because sometimes your gifts are brought to attention first before you're able to move into purpose and operate in your ministry. And so then you also see a little shade thrown in there where Saul was like, oh, okay, go get Jesse's boy, the one who plays the sheep. So sometimes, you know, people want to put you in your position. Like, I'm the king, you're a shepherd. Like, you work with sheep. Um, but God doesn't have respect of person. It doesn't matter because he actually absolutely finds delight in using ordinary people to do extraordinary things through so a little bit about my ministry journey it's like god i don't want to talk to people about my marriage my brotherhood journey or my own journey with ministry um but first he does these things in our lives and that's the that's what we go through that refining process so that we are able to experience him more deeply and shed light on that experience for the benefit and growth of others that actually edifies his kingdom and like draws people to him because like i don't want to be in heaven and it's empty like the banquet in luke that uh christ talks about like i sent out invitations and everybody had these excuses of why they wouldn't come like 
God wants to party with us. He wants to reconcile with us. He wants to kick it with us. And like, we're the ones that get to do some of that inviting down here on earth. So a little bit about my ministry with motherhood and, and in ministry and um, marriage is all the things that I thought were shameful and painful in my life. God is purposefully using those to draw me closer to him give me a deeper relationship with him and then he's opened up my heart um, and removed this mask i used to wear to look like i was so perfect to where i can shed light on like you don't have to be perfect you just got to be willing you just got to be willing to accept god's unconditional love of you and accept his perfect choice of you um and so that's kind of what i do and i mean from i had kicked out of the church i had children unwed i've been divorced and like still god is like that that is what validates you before people people want to know that they've been through something that they're safe in their experience and that's what i feel like god is calling me to do in ministry like not judge but just say like oh okay i've done that and God loved me through it and he helped me through it and he's been with me every step of the way. And I know because he's God and he doesn't change that whatever I went through, it, he will gladly give you the same grace, love and mercy to go through whatever you're going through. So um, lots more I can say about ministry and we'll do like a part two since we got a few Fridays in the month of May and then hopefully get my husband in so we can close out the month talking about marriage and um, God just thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for every person that's listening to my voice that's listening to your voice that may be struggling with what ministry is or how you're choosing to use them help them to clear the ruckus and the noise and the preconceived ideas of of what you want to do in their life and just be willing and available to be used by you and sometimes that means being in pressurized painful and shameful places but god thank god that there is therefore now no condemnation we are no longer condemned god you are god and god all alone bless these ministries increase our service to others in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. Y'all be blessed.